If you take your Bible, I want you to go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4 in your Bible this morning. And uh, I, I think we're going we're gonna to talk to you about a familiar topic, let's put it that way, especially for Christians, familiar topic. Uh, it, it may not be an easy topic for us, per se, about some things, but it's a familiar topic. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do what I was told I should not do, you know, when I, when I was away in Bible college, that was a long time ago, that, you know, you want to read your text first, but I'm not going to do that, okay? We'll get to the text in John chapter 4. Uh, when I start reading, if you've been in, been in church for any length of time, you've, you've heard these verses before, you've heard uh, um, preaching on these verses. But I'd like to pray with you, I ask the Lord's blessing on this uh, sermon time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for you uh, giving us the opportunity now to uh, open up your word in sermon time. We'd ask your uh, blessing what takes place. Uh, we realize as a sermon's preached that uh, sometimes it, 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 uh, you'll take what's offered, Holy Spirit, and, and, and use it in unique ways uh, that doesn't cross necessarily my mind. So we just ask your blessing, pray that you work in our hearts, Holy Spirit, uh, what God has for us today. And may it be helpful to us, uh, profitable to us, may it be honoring to the Lord. And uh, uh, we're, we're thankful that we have, God, your word before us in the year 2024. Yeah, and here we believe that. That's what it is, the very words of God. We're grateful. We're thankful that you have not left us to ourselves to wonder and assume and guess and suppose, but that we have your truth and we're grateful. We pray that you'd help us personally be readers of your word and, and not be so concerned about how much we read, but that we, that we do and make, make it a habit in our lives. And uh, with the Holy Spirit's help, that we would uh, get what you have for us and maybe for the need to actually follow through with it in our lives, you give us grace and strength to do it. But we'd ask now that you help us to be attentive and receptive. Uh, and thank you, Lord, once again uh, for your words before us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're going to be in John chapter 4. i got to tell you, I'm going to read 40 verses when I get there, okay? Not yet, okay? We're going to read verses 3 through 43. I'm thinking about verse 34, but we'll talk about that later too. So it's, and what's going to happen, instead of explaining the text, instead of explaining the text scripture to get us to our text verse, which is verse 34, I'm going to read 40 verses and let the text tell us the story of the woman at the well that you probably heard about before. And we, in that being the case, we will, uh, uh, along the way, we will not say much about the woman. We're not going to talk much about the Samaritans themselves as a people group. We're not going to talk about Jacob's well where she's at and uh, when all the, where all this took place because there's a unique history about that also. And we're not going to say much about the disciples, although the disciples are with the Lord and uh, and uh, they go to get something for a meal time uh, as they have ministry. And the Lord says, I need to go through Samaria. And he's at the well and they go to get the food stuff. And we're not going to talk too much about the disciples to say one or two things about about them and we're not going to say too much about the Lord Jesus outside of the context of verse 34 verse 34 because for us today we're not ignoring or dismissing the many weighty matters that we find in the 40 verses of our text but but I, I want us to think of one thing not one word this time okay one thing okay God's will that's all just God's will and maybe for us this morning, if it if it's a little more endearing to you, uh, the Father's will. Because that's what's in the text. The Lord Jesus talks about the Father's will, his Father's will, God the Father's will concerning the Son of God. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk about the will of God. For many of us, when we think about God's will, God's will or the Father's will, Okay, our mind travels to the Lord's Prayer. Because doesn't that start off that way after you honor God? There's something said there, the Lord's teaching them how to, how to pray 
about Father's will. Okay? And let me get there, and I'm going to read it to you. And uh, I'm going to read it so I don't get it wrong. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now listen, before the rest goes on, the Lord Jesus then says, Thy kingdom come, thy what? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then those other verses give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I say amen. You might say amen, but that's okay. We'll let you slide, but amen. But we're thinking about Father's will. Sometimes we think about Father's will, God's will. Our mind automatically travels to the Lord's Prayer. It's an easy read. It's very simple to understand. There is a majestic beauty about this. And like if you are in the in the, the ritual of praying it, there's a cadence to it. And it touches our heart. And it, it runs really smooth. And it's it's uh, it, it grasps your attention. Uh, what's recorded in Luke in, in the book of Luke about the Lord's Prayer, it's a, it's a little more, uh, I'm not criticized, but a little more choppier, a little bit harder to read. So Matthew seems to be very popular, but we think about God's will, our mind travels to the Lord's Prayer, that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? And we can't talk about, you know, that includes our own personal lives. And also when we, we give thought to God's will or the Father's will, we, we wonder why. We wonder why it seems so hard to discern sometimes. Or it's hard or it's difficult or it's a, it's a long drawn out process to know, to know it. And I think sometimes when that happens, it's because of you, not only you, but it's because of me. We miss the mountain of its presentation before us that's found in the Bible. In the Bible. We miss that. You know? If I could say it this way, for lack of better vocabulary, a giant hunk of God's will, here it is. It's right here. It's in the Word of God. It's expressed in the Word of God. Okay? And sometimes when we're thinking about to know God's will and trying to decide God's will or decipher God's will, that uh, we, we, we miss the mountain of presentation that is our Bible, God's written word. For instance, I think this, even just this, I think it's significant that the Lord's Prayer is right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. It's in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, okay, where he goes to prayer, okay, and that his words and his will, he expresses or to uh, be prayed in prayer, okay, to be done on earth as it is in heaven. When you think about the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is full of what God's will for humans, how they live amongst themselves, how God's people who represent God, how they're to live, how they're to uh, have certain attitudes and behavior and and demeanor and uh, things like that. So so here it is. Okay, we're praying God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's the Father's will that He wants done. It's right in the middle of this prayer that it actually gets done as He's preaching to the people. Really, what you have here, the Sermon on the Mount, God's will for us as human beings: how to treat one another, how to behave, uh, some about our thought lives, our spiritual desires. God's will, we see. We miss it, though. It's in the scriptures. God's will, sometimes we think it's difficult to discern because we miss the on-ramp. <laughs> the on-ramp, the getting on board with God. It's the on-ramp, okay? By being, listen, and, and I'm guilty of this too, by being hesitant to actually put ourselves in the place of surrender. Okay? Of surrender. You know, like like you have the, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22, verse 42, where he prayed, you know, he said, if this cup can pass from me, Father, I'm praying that, it, that, that you work that. And that happens. 
rather than go to the cross? But he says, nevertheless, what? Not my will, but what? Thine be done. See, we, we miss that, that on-ramp to the will of God. We miss the surrender part in our lives. Okay? And, I, and if you're like me, okay, we prefer, we prefer this. We think this in our mind. A lot of times when we think about deciding God's will, discerning God's will, knowing God's will, we, 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 the surrender part isn't quite there with us. We want to know. We're curious. We want to see it. We, we, we want it offered to us, okay, but, but something else is going on. We want God to show us his will first, and then we'll decide if we like it enough to surrender to it. And very often God does not work like that. That's not where he's at. That's not how it works. God wants us to surrender, okay, surrender. So he has our hearts. Okay. So the rest of us then will come along as we learn or know or reveal the will of the Father for our lives. See, see, because God really doesn't want to doesn't strike deals with us. You understand, you know. And God isn't offering; He He offers you His will to you because you you have you have that freedom of choice. You have a degree of autonomy. You can choose. If you want to follow, accept it and follow it. But, but he doesn't, he doesn't force it on you. So what the Lord is looking for, the on-ramp to discerning maybe sometimes God's will in your life. Okay. Knowing this for yourself is to have a surrender to Him in the first place. We always say He knows what's best. We always say He knows the end from the beginning. We always say that He works all things out for good, that those who love Him, they're called according to His purpose, Romans 8, 28. We always say those kind of things, but when it comes to us, like in certain times, we're like kind of hesitant if we're going to surrender or not. We want to see it up front first. And, and, and the Lord says, I want your heart first. I'll help you see this through what I have for you, my will. And then maybe I think about with God's will, maybe we should give a little more credence or importance to the peace of God that is able to rule your heart. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible talks about, Apostle Paul talks about the, the peace of God will rule your heart as you, as you decide things and you live things out in your life. And uh, uh, that you can, can actually live within okay, the peace of God in your life. You can have that peace or peace with God in your life. You're undisturbed inside. You're at rest in where you're at, the road you're taking, the direction that God has given you, God's will, what he wants in your life. Uh, there's, there's a sense of, of safety in that, security in that, even though you might have some difficulties and challenges, that, that there, there's this rest for your soul because you, you have this for your life now the will of God. Now, with all that said, I'm going to read verses 30 through 40. Sorry, not 30, 3 through 40 to you, the text. And, and we'll go back to verse 34, okay, in John chapter 4. So let me get back to John John chapter 4. Let me read that to you and, uh, and get that. Okay, I'm not going to read it without much comment, amen? Because it'll explain itself, and it, but there's a lot here going on. But we're just thinking God's will, Father's will today. Okay? And it says, uh, let's do verse 3. And, he, and the Lord left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And verse 4, John 4, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, dear to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, so that would be just about, that would be noon. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were 
They've already gone away unto the city to buy meat or to buy food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? And she's saying what's true, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, because the Samaritans were half-breeds and are married with the Assyrians. Okay, and uh, so the Jews were like, they're not full-blooded Jews, we, we, we're leaving them alone. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. He's talking about himself. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou, or hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, talking about the well water, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, he's talking about spiritual things now, that I shall give him spiritually shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into, see it's spiritually speaking now, everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither the draw. So she's she's not quite on the same page with Jesus yet. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that saidest thou truly. So the woman understands something's very unique about Jesus. Okay? One, he's a Jew and he's talking to her right out in public, right out in open, the noontime, right at the well. And then he tells her these things. The woman saith unto him, verse 19, Sir, I perceive that thou, she's at least getting on track now, thou art a prophet. You know, our fathers worshipped in this mountain and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. The Samaritans worship in a different place than the Jews because there's that constant separation and all that racial tension. Okay, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know that we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, or comes forth from the Jews, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father, you've heard this verse, seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24, God is a spirit, the Lord said, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now she's getting on track. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. All things we need to do, all things how to get right with God. The Father, Jesus saith unto her, I, this is incredible now, I that speak unto thee am he. I'm the person. I'm the man. I'm the Christ. Now this is coming. Verse 27, Upon this came the disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. They're surprised for a lot of different reasons. Yet nobody, no man, none of them said, What seekest thou or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, while this is happening, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. Evidently, brought, they brought food back from the, from the city for him. And, but he say, said unto them, I have meat to eat, or food to eat, that ye know not of. Therefore say the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him anything to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat. Or what is sustaining me now is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Do the will of the Father that has sent me and finish the Father's work. Then he said, say not ye that there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, and he's talking spiritually now, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already of the harvest. There's plenty of people that need me as their Savior. I'm here to offer them salvation. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth 
and he that reapeth, you know, working together with God and being that witness may rejoice together. And here it is that saying true, one soweth another reapeth. I say you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. In other words, other people have witnessed of the Christ of me and, and you will and your final witness actually see the conversion to the Christian faith. Other men labor and ye are entered into their labors. And it says, And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him for they for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Now listen to this. And many more believed because of his own word, the Lord's own words. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world and he stayed with them another two days before he went to Galilee now what I want to say is this so look at verse 34 Jesus said unto them the disciples say okay because they're thinking you know did somebody give him something to eat you know what what is he talking about you know we, we went to get food and we brought it back for him and now he doesn't want it and verse verse 34 Jesus said unto them my meat or what sustains me what satisfies me right now and what sustains me is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. A little bit about the disciples. And let's say this about the disciples, the physical food that the disciples were concerned with. Okay. And that the Lord Jesus had missed the time for something to eat is not the fault of theirs. The Lord is not giving them grief when he's explaining to them that he has something else that's sustaining him now, even though he's not having physical food, missing a meal. He said there's something else going on, you know, with this situation and with me and my father, and that is what's sustaining me. I don't need food right now. Normally I would partake of this, but that's okay. I'll do that later. I have something else that's sustaining me right now. So the physical food that the disciples were concerned with that Jesus had missed, uh, uh, had missed the time for something to eat is not the fault of theirs. They're, 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 they're not off base. They have concern for Christ and his physical needs. And that makes sense. But a legitimate, okay, uh, need Christ had they were concerned about, but, but, but Jesus takes them beyond that. And at this particular time, the Lord's saying, I need to take time with the woman. I needed to take witness to her. I needed to offer myself to her as the Messiah, as the one she knows was going to come, that's going to offer salvation that the prophets talked about. He said, I'm doing this as the Father's will. And that sustains me in what I'm doing. I'm constraining and compelling. I'm constrained and compelled by the Father's will to witness to this woman her need of me as Savior. The will of the Father. Now what he's saying here, because he's actually leading this lady to himself to be born again. He will lead others to himself as they come and hear him for themselves, the Samaritans. It says he's not doing his will here. Okay, although he's in agreement with the Father, he said the Father's will. I'm doing the Father's will. And you think about the Father's will this particular time, for this particular situation, the Father's will is that desire that, that people get saved, that everyone, in fact, it says in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that the Lord's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance, that the Lord wants people saved. In fact, over and over again, the Gospels, he said, that's why I'm here, to seek what? Seek and to save that which was lost, that which was lost. And that makes sense, and then you understand why why we're we're told that the Son of God died for all, because in the Father's will, He wants everybody saved. Now, not everybody gets saved, not everybody's born again. I understand that, but that's not His desire, though. And He's provided salvation through all through the Son. Okay, so it makes sense that Christ died for all. And you also you need to think about, that's why we're told in Matthew, the end of the book of Matthew, Lord Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every 
creature or every human being. Not just the one you assume is the likely one that might get saved. No, he said to everybody. To everybody. And, uh, and, and that's why uh, the word is with us and the spirit is with us and helps us to be a witness for Christ and to people with their need of Christ and why the, actually the Holy Spirit is for people coming to Christ. He actually is the Lord of the harvest. And that's why we're explained in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, that, that we have a ministry of reconciliation and that we are the ambassadors for Christ in the world. Because, because God's will, the Father's will is he wants people saved. Jesus in the text is, is partially then, and still doing it today, fulfilling the will of the Father. The will of the Father. The will of the Father. You, for you to see this, I think you do already. You see the will of the Father was the Lord Jesus. It was his mission. The will of the Father was his mission. Okay. Was his motivation. Okay. Was his mindset. It was his momentum, if I could put it that way. And it was actually, here we could say this, his manna from heaven that would sustain him instead of physical food. And it filled him with an overwhelming conviction and desire to finish his work, the Father's work in this thing, the Father's will. Okay? To finish it. Now you know a part of this was finished on the cross when the Lord Jesus Christ, as he's dying, and he gave his life and his blood, okay, for the remission of sins, that, that he said... It was what? It's finished. He's conscious of this. It's, it's finished. Okay? So what you have, you have the will of the Father. Okay? Sustaining, maintaining, motivating. Okay? Jesus Christ. To do the will of the Father in the matter of salvation. And not only that, but, but to finish it, to actually finish it, accomplish it, do it, finish it. But very quickly, what I just described in likeness is found in the Apostle Paul's life too. Same type of thing. Acts chapter 26, verse 19, he puts it this way to King Agrippa. He said, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. You know, and what the Lord told me to do, he's got it in those verses in Acts chapter 26. He explains to this, this king, this, this Jewish king, he explains to them, listen, this is my motivation to do the will of the Father. And not only that, to finish the work that he's given me within his will. You said, really? Is that, is that true? Yeah. How about 2 Timothy? How about 2 Timothy chapter 4? How about 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse uh, verse uh, 6? He said, for I'm now ready to be offered, Paul says, at the time of my departure is at hand. He's soon he's going to be executed uh, under Roman rule with a, with a sword to the neck and his head cut off. He said, I've fought a good fight. I've kept, I have finished, the, I have finished my course and kept the faith. So what you have here is this. You, you have this thing with Apostle Paul. Motivation to, to, to the will of God being done in his life, and not only that, to finish what God has for him. Okay? To finish it. Okay? So if you guys want to come up, we're going to sing. But, but So what we've been talking about, too, two other things that I'm do, uh, through for this. Listen, what we have been talking about is found also in the likeness of not just the Apostle Paul, but all the apostles, all the other apostles, the 11 apostles in extra biblical writings. They were of the same sort. If you read about their lives and even you know, about their martyrdoms and all that type of thing and what led to those, those, those happenings in their lives, and the thing of it is they're, they're living out the Father's will in their life. They're living out the Father's will and actually accomplishing the Father's work through them. Okay? And not only that, but there's this, uh, it's, I hate to use the word obsession, but there's this urgency. I, I want to finish it too. 
I want, I want to go ahead and finish what God has given me to do. It's part of his work. It's not mine in a sense. It's his. The last thing is you too. If you're a Christian, I'm a Christian. I wonder how much credence we give to the will of God in our lives. I wonder how much concern we, we, uh, we have about that. It's not that we're sweating it out every day, that, but, but it's the idea that, that, that we would desire that in our lives, the Father's will. Be involved in his work through our lives. And not only that, 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 that we hang in there with it. And we don't, we don't kind of like, you know, kind of half throw in the towel and baloney with it, things like that as time goes by because sometimes it gets difficult. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's a real challenge. Other times things go really smooth and everything is great. The Father's will and our own lives. And not only that, that you and me, we would finish what God gave us to do. Finish, actually finish it, you know finish it you know I think we would want that you know and, and if you're actually like that I'll tell you what you you are a different kind of a person you're different because you you have something motivating your life and moving you towards something um, like the underlying current of things like no matter what you're doing like it's 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 still moving you that way the current is moving you that way And God sustains you through through whatever it is that you experience in life as you work the Father's will in your life and have him get you to the point where you're able to finish it. And I'll tell you what, there will be people that will appreciate that of you. They will appreciate that of you and support you. There are other people that won't understand and may despise you Okay. They may seek to disrupt you or destroy you. There are other people that think you're like a little crazy about where you're at, a little fanatical, you know, but you know you're sane and you know what God has for you. you know. There'll be burdens to bear, but there'll be the blessings too that God will give you. Okay. And like I said, it won't be easy, but you have an anchor for your soul. Okay. Okay. You'll have peace in your heart. You have peace in your heart as you go through life. You will. And the Lord will give you, even if you can't express it on the outside, but sometimes you should, but you, you have an internal joy about just about your life and what you're living. The will of the Father. And John, in the book of John, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, the, the, the disbelief thing. The Lord wants us to believe on him. Almost a hundred times you find that in John. There's some other things going on in John. I need to stop. But the, 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 there's also this thing about Jesus saying this over and over again. Throughout the book of John. About he's conscious and desirous that he lives the will of God. He pleases the Father always. And that he finishes the work that God gave him to do. I would, I would hope that we as believers would be of the same mindset and get a hold of the will of God for your life and, and, and live it out. You're doing his work and stay at it. Stay at it and finish what God has given you. And I'll tell you what, you'll be glad you did. You'll be at peace in your heart. There'll be joy in your life. Even if it's difficult, God will honor you for that. And as you leave here this morning, you think about this, okay? And uh, part of God's will being fulfilled. They asked us, what do we do? I think it's John chapter 5, about, nah, about the, middle of the ver middle of the chapter. They're asking the Lord, uh, so w w what is the Father's will? What, what is that we should do, they ask him? That you should believe on him for the gift of eternal life.
by the Father's will. People are born again. Get saved. Father's will. Lord, I pray you'd help us with what we've heard today. It's probably open a can of worms. That's okay. And help us sort some things out. And help us to, to I know we live our lives and we've got a lot going on and there's a lot to life that just about our existence here and, and about what's needed in life and things like that and what consumes a, a lot of us in time and effort and energy. But uh, help us not to get past, uh, to bypass the will of God for our lives or in our life at any particular time. And may we uh, seek it out, learn it, help us to live it by your mercies and grace. Let's sing.